When we describe solids, liquids and gases, we use something called the kinetic model. That is, the substances are made of particles and they have varying kinetic energies and electrostatic forces of attraction. We also need to define something called the internal energy, and that's the sum of the randomly distributed potential and kinetic energies of the molecules within a substance. Now, potential energy is due to the position between objects, always. Further spaced is always more potential energy. If two things are further apart, then they have a greater potential energy. Kinetic energy is due to a thing's speed and its mass. So these are the big ideas in kinetic theory. The potential energy of the molecules, how far apart they are, and how attracted they are to each other in order to bring them back together, the forces trying to bring them together. And kinetic energy is due to how fast they're moving. Again, that's going to be related to the forces as well and their speed of motion. That idea of potentials, that idea of potential energy, the idea that something is further away has a greater potential energy, is a really key idea when understanding potentials. That helps us understand the ideas in quantum when we're talking about the energy levels in an atom. It helps us understand the ideas of gravitational potential energy and all different ideas that we'll come on to later in A-level physics. You'll be probably quite familiar with this graph from GCSE, the idea that during a change of state the temperature doesn't change. As we heat up a solid, its temperature increases until it reaches its melting point. It starts to melt and it stays at one temperature for that period of time. Then you heat it, its temperature can increase again as a liquid and then it stays at the same temperature as it boils. And then as a gas you can begin to increase its temperature again. Look closely at what's on the axes here, you often see that as being time but I've just said that's energy. As we increase the energy we get a linear increase in temperature until we start to change state. And what's actually going on there is during an increase in temperature, the kinetic energy of the molecules are increasing. During a change of phase, then their potential energies are changing. During melting, they're getting further apart, they're getting to a higher potential energy. And during freezing, then they're getting closer together and they're getting a lower potential energy. So here we have increasing kinetic energy, then increasing potential as it changes state, increasing kinetic energy as it heats, as it increases in temperature, and then increasing potential energy as it changes state, and then lastly again increasing kinetic energy as it changes temperature. The important thing about that graph is that temperature doesn't change during a change of phase. There's a pro tip here which is just like energy levels in an atom, we measure the highest energy as being zero. So molecules and gases are said to have zero joules of potential energy and molecules in liquids and then solids, we talk about them as having negative potential energies. You can think about that as just being the energy that you need to give it, the potential energy you would need to gain to get to the gas phase. So although you can't have negative energies, you can have a negative energy difference. Kinetic theory all began when Brown noticed the random motion of particles and we call this Brownian motion and we now know, he didn't know at the time, we now know that's a result of collisions with the molecules of a surrounding medium. So we can actually observe that in a lab under a microscope by using a smoke cell. So you take some smoke and you trap it in a little piece of glass and you put a light on it and you can actually see the smoke particles dancing like that. They have this kind of random zigzagging motion. Einstein analyzed that in 1905 in his Annus Mirabilis and he used it to provide a mathematical proof of the existence of atoms and that's evidence then for the kinetic model of matter. So in maths they have proofs and uh, in science we have evidence. So you think about these smoke particles being rather large compared to the particles we can't see under the microscope, the particles of the air. And the reason why they have this zigzagging motion is because they're constantly being bombarded by the air particles around them. Einstein was able to do the maths to show that the way in which they moved could be due to the other atoms, the other molecules that were present in that smoke cell. You'll no doubt be familiar with the particle pictures of solids, liquids and gases. And uh, you need to have really detailed and accurate descriptions of these things for your A-level physics. Be really, really careful because you've studied these from key stage three. And if you use the wrong terms, you'll lose easy marks here. Solids have particles which are held with strong forces of attraction in a regular three dimensional lattice. They vibrate on the spot. They're fixed in their position. Liquids have particles which are free to move around each other. So they have a higher potential energy. So they're slightly further apart. They're slightly less fixed in their position. And because they can move past each other, that allows fluid behavior. Gases have particles with negligible forces of attraction and they're moving at high speeds in random directions. And that idea of negligible forces of attraction will come back to us. That's why we define that as being the zero energy point. <laughs>